Hi, it's Christy of So To Speak, and welcome back to the So To Speak Closet Series. Our guest today is Andrea Heath from our beloved Utica Zoo. And I remember when Andrea and I first met, one of the things that she said about why she loves being part of the Utica Zoo is because it's our local Disney World. And it was just coming out of every pore that she had, how much she loves the zoo and how she knows that it matters to us on such a nostalgic and loving level. And she prides herself on making it be a landmark and a place in our community that makes everybody feel like a kid and that brings joy and love and sense of community. And our conversation really focused a lot around how to navigate being a leader during any uncertain times, right? We hear uncertain all the time now, but really anytime, if you're the leader, there's, you're always kind of winging it in regards to knowing what's going to happen because you just don't know. And we also discussed how it is so important to be able to sustain a sense of trust and connection with your team now and also going forward. And lastly, we of course talked about those adorable little animals and how they're all doing and how you can support the Utica Zoo from afar. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy our conversation. You know, I saw someone post the other day, it made so much sense. The airplane say, you know, when you're going down, before you put the mask on someone else, put it on yourself first. You have to make sure that you're level-headed, that you can think things through before you can help anybody out. Absolutely. Yeah, the oxygen mask is such a big one, and it's, it, it often goes un, undone. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're waiting yeah. until you're gasping for air before you're actually like, oh, wait a second, I wasn't breathing. Or I, <laughs> you know, and I, I'm very fortunate. I have small kids at home who mirror back to me exactly how I'm showing up. So I can't get right. away with that. <laughs> Right. You, know? you bring up such a good point. The other day, I was, I somebody had kind of asked, I, I think it might have been Heather Vivi. She asked, you know, uh, curious, how are people, is there another life out there in homes without kids? And I, I started thinking, oh my gosh, I remember the days. I mean, I have two kids. They're close in age. They're 17 months apart. My stay at home time right now would have been so different if they were still toddlers or even in grade school and I was doing this home at school thing. And quite honestly, it is so different right now. You know, I've been thinking about this, and without wanting to be dramatic about it, uh, I feel like a mother. I'm a mother, but I, I am without my children. They're grown, so they live in their own homes, and that's how it's supposed to be. But I can't see them even if I want to. So it's really that piece of my identity is weird right now because we stay in touch. My kids are really good about reaching out. I'm not seeing my mom either. So I'm a daughter and I get, my mom is, is with us, thank goodness, but I don't get to see her. Uh, so it's, and I know we could do the six foot thing maybe, but I, you know, in the spirit of trying to really, at least the last couple of weeks when they said that the height could really be here for us, I, I haven't gone anywhere and I haven't seen anybody except for my husband. Uh, but it's just been, that's been weird. But what if they were still toddlers or school age or even, Last night I said to my husband, wow, what about the parents who have teenagers or early, you know, late teens, early 20 something, maybe they were at college and now they're home and they have serious significant others. What's going on with those relationships? Like that's gotta be really, really tough, especially if they don't live near each other. But they're, even if they do live near each other, that might even be tougher because they're not really supposed to be, you know, hanging out at each other's houses till midnight and then they go home. Uh, so, you know, I'm just looking at every stage and saying, this is tough for people. It is across the board. And it's so empathetic of you and compassionate of you to be able to take that objective standpoint, you know, because I feel like it is easy for us to get wrapped into what's immediately happening in front of us or get paralyzed by fear of what's happening outside and not really being like, wow, there we're all going through this in our own way and we're all sacrificing things and there is a slightly counterintuitive feel of connection through that you know like we're giving stuff up but we're connecting um 
Yeah. Right. We're in it together. But then again, that would be wrong for us to really think that we're all doing it the same way because we all have our own struggles with it. Yes, exactly. And, and it's so easy to, you don't want to, you don't want to be the person who's doing this, but to every different degree, we're all judging in some regard and, and not saying that it's a malicious, like you're homeschooling wrong or you're, you know, remote working wrong. But there are these moments of like, just a waking up of like, oh, wow. Not everybody is doing it this way and it is okay. It is okay. Like as long as we're staying within the CDC health recommendations and safety recommendations, everything else is okay. It's just how you are able to survive through this. How are all the animals yeah. doing at the zoo? Because we're so fortunate to now be accredited with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, I have 239 other CEOs slash executive directors of zoos and aquariums all across the nation that I get emails from and with every day like there's just these awesome things that are going around teaching each other and encouraging and lamenting some of the same challenges and I'm starting to see some of the larger zoos and some of the press that they're putting out that says you know maybe these animals are kind of missing the you know the visitors or the maybe some of the enrichment or the the uh, activity um, and so our keepers are doing such fun things right now to take the place of that. If anyone's watching our social media, our keepers are doing like Instagram takeover days, keeper takeover days. And they're really doing kind of like a day in the life of, and they're showing it all. You know, they're showing what they end up getting covered with accidentally, or how many wheelbarrows of stuff that they're hauling out of the zoo every day. And they're putting that on Facebook. And then someone questions, well, what do you do with all that hay that has manure stuck in with it? And what we do actually is we have a manure pile out past the parking lot, but we're creating wind roads and they're getting turned, which in turn becomes this amazing compost, which then we bring back into the zoo for our garden. And people don't realize, you know, what, uh, you know, how do the earth, how much to the earth we are at the zoo. We really try to walk the walk and talk the talk about being conservation minded. And that's the reason zoos exist. And part of it is, I think that's part of the whole being at home too is, you know, we're, trying to be a little more self-sufficient at home because we're trying to go out less. Um, when this first started, you know, with the whole shortage of things in the store, we were a little worried about shortage of things at the zoo. Like the, we use a specific disinfectant with our animals. It's, it's a simple green um, brand, but it's, it's specific and, in, and it's safe for the animals. And we were worried that we weren't going to be able to get enough of it for the long haul. We didn't know how long this would last. We were worried that we weren't going to be able to get shipments of crickets and mealworms. So the staff is actually, we're trying to cultivate our own cricket and mealworm colony. I don't know how it's going, but I thought it was pretty ingenious of them to try just in case. Uh, so the animals are doing great. The staff's doing great. Um, I miss the staff and I miss the zoo. I haven't been there because I am the executive director, but I'm really not essential. I don't have to be there to run the place. It's been a challenge to be the director from Herkimer, which is where I live. But the biggest thing that is on my mind is keeping the two teams. We have a handful of people working remotely, and then most of the staff are on ground taking care of things. And for me, the most important thing is unifying and having two teams that are working distantly, but I want us to stay together because when we get back together, I don't want there to be any awkwardness or any divide of any type. So we set some things up at the very beginning. Thank goodness for technology, uh, you know, where we're in touch every single day, seven days a week. Uh, there's someone representing the at home group, even on weekends. And then there are all the teams that are at the zoo. There's a certain number of people and every day we get in touch. We have a lot of plans for 2020. We have new things at the zoo for visitors to enjoy and that they can, you know, invest a little bit of extra money after they even get into the zoo. And it's going to really help the zoo, you know, flourish and some fun things. And they're all just kind of, you know, waiting to be uh, use. Um, so we don't have any, we don't have any on ground revenue right now. We don't have any admission, gift shop sales, feed machines, you know, it's just not happening. Uh, so it's, it's a challenge right now.
Yeah, it, it is a challenge. And it sounds like you guys, from everything you're saying, are really figuring out the best you can, you know, how much you can in regards to finding the opportunities in it. Like, what can you guys do? Where can you guys figure out how to make it work with the limited amount of resources at, that you're able to staff and otherwise? Are there, are there any other opportunities that you see coming up for you guys with in regards to this is the... This, this is our reality as of right now, our temporary reality. You could get lost in, we, we have no, you know, um, we, we don't have any sales in the gift shop. And, and it's, it, that is a reality too. So it's not about turning a blind eye to that, but you can absolutely have that be on the front burner where it paralyzes you, which it doesn't sound from what you're saying that that's your, the energy you're giving off or the mentality that you, that you have. So I'm asking two part thing. So, so it's first I'll ask, are you seeing opportunities in addition to the ones you've already shared? So one of the first things we did is joined other, not only zoos, but other um, entities who said there are going to be a lot of parents at home seeking resources for these lessons that they're trying to, you know, teach their children as part of school. And we are a STEM-based science organization. So right away, our education team and our marketing team and just all of us got together and started to push out this curriculum in a way that has never happened for the Utica Zoo before. Um, with these online, we, you know, our jingle, the Utica Zoo jingle is kind of pretty well known. You know, it's, it, people know the words, they know to hum it. And part of the humming chorus in there is a little kazoo solo. So as we were, you know, brainstorming how to do some education programs that people would want to tune into every few days or every day on our Facebook, social media, and on our website, uh, we actually came up with Yuda Kazu. So Yuda Kazu, and that's where people can find uh, a, an awesome segment every single, you know, throughout the week, and then it leads people back to our website for some additional tools, crafts projects, things that kids could do with their families. And um, so we're offering all of that virtually, and we're just offering that as part of our mission to educate about animals, wildlife, conservation, how to commingle with wildlife on our planet, and make sure that animals can still survive and that we don't take over. Uh, so that's part of our mission. We're doing that. But we are trying to think, okay, are there ways that we can go deeper? Can people enjoy those, everyone, for free? We don't want anyone to not be able to tune in. But are there some things that people can then sign in and maybe purchase from us uh, as extras? We're pretty soon we're going to be rolling out some digital uh, encounters. And, and and Nancy Ford, I think it was, saw one of the videos that I shared of our uh, goat kind of walking around the zoo a little bit. And she, you know, kind of exclaimed, hey, I bet you if you had some of those goats entering some of these online conference calls that people are doing, they would love it. So, and then we're going to be doing some digital adoptions where people can actually, you know, adopt one of our animals for, you know, an amount, and then they'll get some stuff, you know, digitally sent to them that they can download or listen to or watch. We have a members only section now of our uh, website uh, where there's a login. So they're getting some preview of some things first, or they're getting things that other people won't see. And so that's to encourage people to still get their membership. We're trying to be creative and I'm trying to sound calm. I, I won't say that I'm always calm about this. We did apply for the uh, the paid check protection program. And uh, because we are a not-for-profit with less than 500 employees, we're actually less than 50 employees. Um, so that will be, you know, helpful for a time. Uh, and we're, we're really just trusting that um, our community will come and see us again when they can. And we're hoping to recoup. Some of what we aren't gaining right now, but the most important thing is that we are part of people staying safe. We want our staff, we have to be closed because we want our staff to be able to go and take care of the animals and be safe. So we're actually being very protective, which is one of the reasons why I haven't gone to the zoo. I'm not needed there in person. I'm, I've never worked harder actually than working from home right now. I keep seeing people talk about how clean their homes are and all this stuff. I am baking, but I'm doing that after hours. Um, but you know, I, I've been working a lot every morning we kind of have these routine hours now set for during the day so that we're really being disciplined while we're working remotely the biggest thing that we're struggling with and i i know that our community will get behind us on it because we just have to do what's right is our event 
we have events that are pretty successful. People love to go to Wine in the Wilderness and Brewfest. And last year we did Bourbon and Blues, which was intentionally a smaller crowd with a little higher ticket price. Um, but are people really going to want to come to a 2,000 person wine event with the bands that we have and, uh, you know, and all the, all the fun? I, will that happen in 2020? We're, we're struggling with that right now. And it makes so much sense. I mean, we, I don't think you have to worry about people coming back to support the zoo or to continue. You guys are such, you have a huge fan club in our entire community, but it's, it's such a realistic concern about just having the mass amount of people coming into a place together with knowing that it used to be a huge event. And not just a huge event in regards to the amount of people coming in, but also just in regards to the sales coming in too, and just being able to promote the zoo and to have people associate the zoo in a different way, even beyond the animals, but like in, engaging with them, but in a totally new and innovative way. It makes total sense that it would be like, we don't know. And so with that being said, this is kind of part two of, of where I was thinking with the previous question was, it makes sense that you would not always be calm. I, I don't know anybody who would always be calm um, unless you're like heavily medicated, to be totally honest. It, you're human, like it's so normal. So how are you able to, um, like just anybody watching who, who is also in a leadership position, very traditional leadership when I say that. I mean, uh, someone who is running a team, someone who is the executive director, CEO, uh, manager, supervisor, in regards to, not getting lost in the what ifs and the uncertainties and creating this energetic ripple down effect of fear and scarcity among your staff and your teams. How do you allow yourself to be real and human and then and have those honest emotions and not have it engulf everybody that is part of your team or yourself, you know? Yeah, or even my husband, you know. Yeah that you know he's not having to deal with what i might be afraid of right now for the zoo um well two parts i have a really strong faith and so sometimes i just have to remember to breathe and pray and just i i can't control this none of us can and we can't even control how everybody's responding to it some are going to do what needs to be done and some are not going to do what they think doesn't need to be done and so i can't control any of it so i just need to you know, let it go and breathe it through and pray and, and just keep on doing what I can do to try to feel good about what I'm doing with it. But the other piece is, and maybe this will be helpful to somebody, is I probably one of my biggest things is that I never want to live with regret. I don't want the people that I love to live with regret. And so one of the things that people know about me, especially the team that I work with, is at the end of the day, at the end of the zoo day, every day, I bring practically my entire office home with me every night. If it's not a healthy thing, I am not, I'm not promoting that or advocating that people do that. I just have a sense of control about me that, oh, what if I couldn't go to work the next day and I don't have my stuff with me and I'm supposed to get stuff done. So I literally, I bring my laptop and just tons of files and papers and notebooks to send her home with me every night. I can barely walk out of the zoo. And everyone wants to help me carry things. And I always say, I got it because I'm balanced because I'm just so laden down on both sides of my arms with stuff. I, I probably have back problems that I don't even know about. But, and then I bring all the stuff back home, back to the zoo the next day because I was probably home just enjoying my home time and I didn't get to it. But I brought it home just in case. I'm a just in case kind of person. So on the day that we decided to close the zoo, literally drove my car in and I brought just about every single piece of paper in my office that I could ever need because I didn't know how long this was going to last. And I currently have two beautiful farmhouse tables in my dining room that my husband built for my daughter. Um, and I have them in my dining room and they're covered right now with piles of Utica Zoo stuff. And the regret piece is I'm going to use this time to become so caught up I'm going to do things that are just practical, but I'm also going to work on some of these dream projects that I've had to promote growth with the zoo or part of our plans that are going to take us into the future. I'm going to do as much of that as I can right now because who really gets this time? It's a, it's a reset. And I, 
I use that word because right before this happened, I was using this word with other members of the management team at the zoo. I've been using it since the end of January, where I actually called one of my coworkers from a trip I was on uh, for, for work in North Carolina, and I said, you know, I wish we all could just have a little bit of time to just not worry about what we have to do for the future, but that we could just get everything done that we need to get done for right now. I can't believe I said that to her. I said it to Nikki. You, you've met Nikki. And now we're actually in that time where you can't really do too much for the future because we just don't know when we can start it again. So I'm just going to use this time to get as much done. And then when I can go back to the zoo, I'll be much more in the present because I won't be thinking about everything I have to get the done. Thing is, so I don't have any regrets when I look back and say, oh, I had all that time at my, at my fingertips and I didn't use it well. I'm trying to use it well. And then my biggest goal is that I'm more present when we become present. I, I heard you in another podcast say, don't necessarily use the word productive, but use the word purposeful. And I want to be purposeful while I'm home right now because I hope this never, ever happens with us again. And that's the other piece is, you know, I'm surrounded by scientists, which is so funny because I did not have a science mind at all. But I'm grasping more because I'm around such geniuses when it comes to science. But because I'm around so many scientists, they understand the nature of viruses. And, you know, I think we have to have some, some new vision about how to make things work and what the definition of success is. I think we're going to have, in the zoo world, which we're such a tourist industry, I, we have to be ready for some new ways to be a tourist industry. And who would, who would have known that we're doing it so virtually right now? We have such a great team that's helping us do that. You having created, created, co-created this fantastic team when the stakes were lower, much lower. How much of, I don't want to say it was easy, but a smoother transition where if you are not in a team prior to, like when things are kind of moving along on, on a normal pace or in the normal space, and then something such high stakes as, I mean, this is the highest stakes I think any of us have experienced, a, a global mm -hmm. pandemic, chant, maybe it'll make people wake up and they'll become more cohesive, but I, I'm, my gut feeling is that that's not the case, right? Because you have to create that trust beforehand so that when this happens, that trust is already built so that you're going off of that. Well, you, you brought up a, a really key word, trust. You know, to, to have a whole bunch of people working from their own homes, I'm not speaking just for myself, I, I must be speaking for no, a number of people, you have to know that you might not have all these metrics set up that tells you as a leader, okay, the zoo's resources are being used wisely and in a healthy way because we're getting all this stuff done. Like the, Those metrics might not always be set up that way. We've tried to set them up because we want to produce things for our public and our, our community and even beyond the walls of, you know, even beyond the region of the greater Mohawk Valley, people are watching our stuff from all over the country. And we know that from the comments we're getting, but, you know, I can't measure all of the end results, but I know because everyone cares enough and they get it, that they're working so hard. And I, I trust it. I know it. I see it. I hear it. I see it in their faces when we're on these calls, these virtual or these video calls. Uh, but the other thing is, interestingly to what you said, one of our managers, our education manager, so he has a key role in the Kids Academy, Yuta Kuzu, um, uh, educational programs that we're producing all the time. He just started with us. His first day of work was, I want to say, Wednesday the 11th, and we closed on the 15th. So he literally was only working with us for two days. And then we all started working at home. So we didn't really get a chance to start to work with him very much or, or get to know him. And he's an integral part of the team right now. And he's just pumping out the ideas and the creativity. And he's fun. So he's helping us to have fun, too. Um, so that was a whole new – we're getting to know him in this way. Yeah. And then when we get back to the zoo, we get to know him another way. And we hired two keepers since we've been closed. They actually moved here, one from North Dakota and one from Maine. We did that for a couple of reasons. We hired them before this happened, so they'd already given their notice. So we honored the position that they needed to come in. The other thing is we wanted to make sure that we were keeping our animal care team quanti quantity-wise and quality, of course, but quantity-wise 
we need to keep the numbers up because what if we have an exposure at the zoo and all of the people that are working together right now can't take care of the animals. You can't just hire someone off the road, off the street who can come in and learn the job in a day and take care of these, these living animals. So we actually have a couple of people working from home that are our key animal care staff. They could comprise a very small team and then those of us that have been working home can join those two animal care experts we can go in and we can be the commissary. We can be the sous chef. We can wake up the so yard. Having this contingency plan or plans, it sounds, yeah. is so calming and supportive to the entire team as well. Whether they say it to you or not, because there's there when you're feeling so out of control in a situation, knowing that there is some sort of a plan makes you have a sense of control if right? So it just calms the nerves a little bit where so much is out of our control, what's within our control, if we have to do that. Okay, so there's a, so that, that brings a little bit, expands our sense of control a little bit out and brings in the uncertainty a little bit. It's not as expansive and big and, and looming. The contingency plan and, and that is really a blessing. And I was the executive director of our local Red Cross for about 14 years, and we always, I always joke that you can take someone out of the Red Cross, you can't take the Red Cross out of a person. So I am very much a, you know, disaster preparedness type of mindset, and um, I think it is making us all, you know, know, just to know that the animals will have the second team if we need it, and, and I'm, I'm excited about our team. And the good news uh, piece was we'd actually been working on something for a number of years and it just closed um, through the attorney in November. We, we launched the news uh, just a couple of weeks ago in April, but the Utica Zoo was actually gifted a piece of property here in the Mohawk Valley and right outside of Dollsville and it's called Beaver Sprite. It's 1,300 acres of this amazing, gorgeous conservation land. We have a beautiful drone of it that Mark Simon did. And uh, we're going to be doing some great programming over the next decade. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, what a great feeling in general, but especially amidst everything happening. Like, you get those, and it's just a little bit of, of light at the end of the tunnel, you know? That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. And, Thank and you. speaking of that, in addition to that, what can we do for the zoo? What is the, how can we help? Well, again, you know, watch for when we can can reopen and please come, you know, come and, and visit us because we just want to see folks having, you know, that enjoyable time at the zoo again. Uh, we recently on our social media released an Amazon Smile type of a um, post with a wish list both on Amazon Smiles, but then there's also a wish list on our uh, website. And it's really, it's funny because you're going to look at some of the items and say, really, you, you need paper towels, you need copy paper, et cetera. But our philosophy is if there's something that we're not actually having to write a check for, it's like a cash donation. So someone, you know, craisins, our animals love craisins, Brazil nuts with the with the shell, uh, our hyacinth macaw, Joe, he, he, those are enrichment for him, they're a treat. Um, we also have an, a, an emergency fund link on our website, you know, if, if we are someone's top charity or they, you know, they're inclined to want to support a place that does take care of animals and, and cares about animals, uh, you know, we would that would be helpful as well. Um, we're we're hopeful that this isn't you know going to have a permanent mark on us, but we're going to ask our our community to be in this with us for the long haul. We some of this could actually still hurt us next year, like the membership. If people are waiting to buy their membership till we open, that's actually going to be could potentially be like a half a year's loss of income for us next year too if they're waiting because. You know, membership begins when someone buys it. It's not January. Uh, so just continue to, you know, have the zoo in your sights and, uh, and, and, and don't, don't get down on us if we decide not to do our events the way you want us to, because we're going to have to do it the way that we have to do it this year. And so, you know, there's nothing more discouraging than when you labor over a decision and then you kind of get some haters who are going to criticize you for the decision. We're going to do what we think is best. And, What's best is to be able to hold our events because it's about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue. That's about a little a little more than ten percent of our entire annual budget. But if we can't do it this year, we can't do it. Yeah, and Andrea, haters gonna hate. You know, it's like 
like there you have enough people who are standing behind you who if if anything's going to come out of this in regards to how we're treating each other it's freaking compassion like just being compassionate coming back full circle to how you and I were talking about oh wait a second people are living differently in their homes during the quarantine, you know, the people who are not in the front line, who are safely inconvenienced, like we're all handling this the best we can. And that has so much to do with businesses too. Things are going to be different. People talk about going back to normal. It, there's, there's no such thing. And so embracing the fact that we really are all trying to make this be as as much of like a, a space for our community to come together now and once we can all come back out of the social distancing really physically show up for each other the best we can thank you so much for for doing what you guys are doing with the zoo which we all love so much if people want to learn more about the zoo where can they find you guys so our social media is really vibrant instagram facebook twitter and then, our, and then it all drives right to the website, uticazoo.org. And then we're trying the website, which, by the way, one of our projects for this year was to rebuild a pretty old-fashioned website. And so I can't tell you the number of times we've kind of crashed our server because we're just putting so much content on it. Uh, but we've got some plans to do that. And, you know, the partnerships. We have people helping us get this stuff done. So, um, yeah, social media, the website, and uh, email, you know, any of us and would love to set up a call. I mean, I think having some time to talk to each other because we're not seeing each other is really critical. It's huge. It is so huge for us to be able to uh, just to talk to each other, but also to put yourself out there and get on video if you're not used to doing it because seeing each other is the best next thing. It's a distant second, but it's the best next thing to, to being in the same space with each other. Right. And when we first started to do these daily calls with our supervisory team, bridging the at zoo and at remote teams together, we were doing it, you know, through a, a conference call member every day. And boy, I would hang up that call and I would feel like, oh, this doesn't feel good. And then just for the past week or so, we've been doing it with the, uh, actually, we chimed in on the offer that Northland gave us, um, gave the whole community with these Ascension calls. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, such a gift that yeah, they, again, the partnership. Mm -hmm. The difference between being able to see our team together, 100% turnaround. And it doesn't matter about your tech savviness. Like, everybody gets it, you know? It might be your first time on whatever platform you use, but that's, as a leader, time for you to lead by example and be like, guys, let's, let's just call it what it is. I'm not tech savvy or I'm figuring this out or whatever it is, and nobody's going to care. Like, if you could get audio and video working, golden. Like, we just want to be able to yep. see hear each other. So, yeah, um, I have two set up right now on my ironing board, and, and I've got my phone in a bracelet right now. That's how it's standing up. Yes, <laughs> and my computer is resting beautifully on an extra mattress pad. So, it's like, you know, you do what you got to do, and sometimes it's a yoga block. So, Andrea, before we let you go, uh, right now in this moment, what would be the animal that you are embodying the most? Oh, okay. Um, man, I miss, I absolutely miss all of the animals so much. I can't even believe it. Um, our Urials are going to probably have babies any moment now. No, I'm not saying that about me. I'm an old woman. Um, but I miss my kids a lot. So, and I know that there's going to be some births at the zoo right now. And the Urials are just really cool. And they're also right out my office window. So right now I'm really into the Urials. Into the Urials, awesome. Oh, I love it. And it's because you're, you're in mama mode big time, right? <laughs> yes, <I can. laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, thank you, Andrea, so much. And uh, we will definitely see each other in real life once all of this is over. Yes, and thank you for doing this, Christy. This is going to help us stay connected. I thank you for inviting me. I'm honored that you invited me. Thank you so much. It's so mutual. And send all of our gratitude to the entire zoo team. Will do. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you.